My name's Captain Billy Pettigrew. Uh, true Florida cracker, born and raised Daytona. Lived in Ormond most of my life. Live in Port Orange now. Do a lot of redfish tournaments, travel all over. Um, basically from the whole Southeast, Louisiana, Georgia, Florida. Ain't made it to Texas yet. Didn't see a point to. I heard it got too cold last week or week before, whatever it was. I'm gonna cover springtime, early spring, transitioning into early summer, late spring. I'm gonna cover a bunch of different tricks, tips, techniques, whatever you wanna call it. Gonna give away a little secret. Now, the only thing is, is I don't have the right size hook, but I'm gonna make do with what I got. Um, this time of year, water's warming up, the bait fish are gonna start running, and if you start looking at all the bait that's in the river, most of it's either this big or this big. Um, redfish this time of year, they're keyed in on small baits. Um, so we're gonna start off the day early morning and we're gonna get the ideal scenario. You wake up, whatever morning it is, sun shining, very light breeze, and you hit the water and you're pulling into your first spot. What I'm gonna look at this time of year, if I can get the ideal situation, um, and if I was fishing in Flagler area, I'd head north towards St. Augustine and I would be looking for the creeks at low tide on the last part of the outgoing tide, you know, within two hours of the last part of the outgoing tide, and I'm gonna throw a top water. Favorite color is the speckled trout color or bone. Um, Everybody's kind of got their own little niche on what they like to throw. A buddy of mine likes to throw the clown, which is chartreuse, blue, red, and white. I've, um, but this time of year, I like throwing the Spook Junior. All right, it's just it's the right size, the right rattle. Um, later on in the spring, getting into you know late spring, I'll go. I like to go to the Skitter Walk. Different sound, different size, different way the reaction is. So, throwing the Spook Junior. I like to fish, like I said, the outside, the outgoing tide. Um, if I can get it in the morning or late in the evening, this is what you want to throw. And this is actually what you want to throw this time of year, whether the tide's low or high. And I'm going to tell you where to throw this when the water's up. But right now you want to fish this Mouth of the creeks, around the edges, around the oyster bars, on the outgoing tide. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen a redfish blow up on top water. I'm going to tell you what, it is the funniest thing to watch a redfish literally come out of the water with his whole head out of the water because their mouth is on the bottom. So they have to come completely out to grab the bait. Or some of the other ones I've seen where they turn upside down and grab the bait. That was fun. It's interesting to watch. If you want to know the cadence, I like a slow, steady, just click, 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 and then maybe I'll pause it. Because I'm using this to find them. Now, once I see the fish either come up behind the bait, because of what we call shark it, this will be working, and the fish will be behind it. And as you move it, it'll move it. What I do at that instance is I'll give it a couple quick pop, 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 to get it to work a little bit faster to see if he's going to react to it. Because that's what you're looking to do is get him to react to a bait. And when you start working it faster, it is like a regular bait in the water, you know, something big behind it, it's gonna take off. I don't know about you. If I'm in the middle of the road and King Kong's behind me, I'm not gonna kinda just go, okay. I'm gonna get out of dodge. So when you see the fish behind your plug, especially on a top water, you do wanna work it faster. Just not burring it back, but you wanna do, you know, just a couple feet of just faster twitches. If you start your day and the water is high, I like to find the grass banks. You know, the saw grass that you see along the banks, this whatever you want to call it. I know fish, I don't know plants. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> you can sit there and go, oh, that's a red mangrove. I'm gonna be like, sure, it's a bush. <laughs> um, I like to work these if the water's high in the morning or late in the evening right down the edge of the grass. As tight as I can get it, like if this was the grass line right here, 
I want this bait literally as it walks, tick the grass, hit the grass. I want to pop it out of the grass. Um, if you guys in the summertime, you look at finger mullet, when the water's up, they're in the grass, you jump in there and you see them start scattering and jumping, you see the grass move. Um, that's what I'm trying to mimic with my top water in the mornings or late evenings. I'm normally a lazy person by the evenings. I'm in bed. Um, actually, my bedtime was 15 minutes ago, but we won't go there. <laughs> so I'm more of a morning person. I prefer the mornings, late evenings work this time of year. And I will say this is if you do get a cold front, like we always do every this time of year, the afternoon bites will be better because it gives it time for the water to warm back up and make it more comfortable for the fish to move around. So, so like I said, we're gonna start with the ideal situation. You're getting the last part of the outgoing tide. You got two hours, first thing in the morning, sun's cracking, you're throwing this for the first couple hours, and then all of a sudden the water starts coming in. I will switch from this to a different style bait. Um, I go to a weighted hook, all right? I like to throw the four aught because it's the smallest hook I can get away with with the heaviest weight from owner without going to the beast hooks, which are like the six O's, seven O's and that are heavier. This is a four aught, eighth ounce. Now I rig this with two different baits. If the fish that I see are really active, you see a lot of fish chasing, give me a, oh, there it is. I go to a paddle tail which everybody's thrown or seen a paddle tail. I like to go natural. I do like to go to the 3.3s, 3.5 inch baits. This is a four. Later on, I'll go to a bigger bait, but I'm gonna teach you how I rig these things. Everybody does it different. You know what? This is a Mr. Charlie's from Walmart. Um, I throw a lot of, one of my favorite ones is actually the Ber Berkeley Havoc Grass Pigs. Um, they got a couple colors that I like. Um, one is the Swamp Gas, which is very similar to this, a little more brown, a little more red. Um, then I throw the Greenback Shad, or the Greenback, which kind of looks like a finger mullet, a herring, a pogey, kind of looks a little bit like everything. Um, so, I mean, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. I mean, I like the bigger tails. I like a bigger thump, even on the smaller ones. Um, so like I said, this is the four inch, it's a little bit bigger. I prefer basically where my finger is, you know, three and a half, three to three and a half inch bait this time of year. And like I said, as it warms up, as the bait starts getting bigger, then I start going to bigger baits. So, but here's how I hook this. All right, everybody does it different. This is the way I do it. Everybody's like, oh, you need a lot of action on your baits. I'm not that kind of guy. I take the bait, I go in upside down and I go as straight as I can to get it in there. So I start with the bait upside down, and then as I screw this thing on there, I'll even get close up to the camera, don't worry. So as I screw this thing on there, that bait is as tight as it can be to the eye of the hook. All right, and you can still see there's swing in there. And I know a lot of people, they like to have that extra gap that gives it a little bit more freedom. This bait ain't meant to have that much freedom on the head. All right, and then you hook it in there and you hook it weedless, all right? Because all the action in this bait is actually on the tail. The vibration is the tail. So, and I like it tight on the hook because then it makes it a lot more weedless to begin with. You have that little bit of gap, there's something a little piece of grass can get in there. Be surprised where a little piece of grass can get on a hook and I don't understand it. So if there's a lot of bait action, this is what I like to go to as a paddle tail. If I don't see a lot of bait action, I see a little bit here and there. I actually go to a jerk shad, whether it's a fluke style bait. Um, I'm a gulp fan, I like Berkeley gulp. Um, I go to natural, this is smelt. Um, I'll even do watermelon red. Um, Let's see some of the other colors, blue neon, and then the, one of my favorite colors, which is hard to find, is sardine. So the same thing with this. The way I rig this is exactly the same way I rig the swim bait. I start upside down. 
So when I put this in there and get this thing screwed on there to keep it as weedless as I can, so when it gets on the hook, and actually I'll pass this around if you guys want. So it's as weedless as it can be. Nothing for it to catch here. Can't get the hook in there. Just I kind of skin hook it a little bit so when a fish grabs it, it sticks. Um, the one thing I will say about these right here, and the best way to check if you got this thing on right, is stick it, once you get it rigged, all right, stick it in the water next to you and just pull it. And it should swim like this. If it starts doing this, that means there's something crooked on it somewhere. All right? And you need to re-straighten it out. Because when the bait spins like that, it's not doing the proper action it's supposed to. So having it as straight as it can be, it'll wiggle through the water like this. It'll kind of literally like swim. So when you hop it, it goes up and down. Instead of if it's crooked, it'll go up and then kind of helicopter down. And that's not what you want on these baits. All right, so this is mid-tide coming in in the morning. As the tide gets higher, I go to a different system. Same baits, different system. Fishing is very simple. People get it overly complicated. So as the tide gets higher, and you're, you're working high tide now, all right, I go to a jig head. Now, depending on where you are, um, so if you're, okay, so we'll do it this way. If you're closer to the inlet, you're gonna have hot, you know, higher water flow. Um, you beef up. I mean, this is an eighth ounce. Eighth ounce is kind of where my all around like to, I like to be, whether it's a weighted hook, a jig head. Now, when, like I said, you get closer to the inlet, you may need to go up to a half ounce jig head, three eighth ounce, you know. Like I said, I like the eighth ounce. And the one thing I do about the jig heads, and I'm particular with, I like to match my jig heads to my baits. Um, best way to describe it is if it's natural, I'll throw a white jig head. If it's not natural, I throw a red jig head. We're targeting redfish. Redfish mainly feed on the bottom. Their mouths are on the bottom. They look down. They mainly feed on the bottom. So I want to keep my bait as close to the bottom as I can. So when the water's super shallow in the morning, low tide, well, you know, when you're not much water, you can throw a top water. It's right there in their face. As the water comes up, you need to bring it down a little bit. As it comes up, you can bring it down. Um, not to say that a redfish won't come up and 40 foot of water out in the ocean and come blast the top water. I've seen it done. There's plenty of videos you can watch. But fishing inshore, inland, as the water gets deeper, I normally go to this. And the best way to describe it is if it's two foot or more, I'll go to a jig head. Will I throw it in 18 inches? Will I throw it in a foot of water? Yes, I will, depending on the way the fish is gonna react. Um, because the difference with the jig head to the weighted hook the jig head's gonna stand up when it hits the bottom. So it sticks the tail up on this, where the jig head or the weighted hook is gonna lay down. So if the fish, you know, and I'll flip back and forth, but normally rule of thumb is 18 inches or less, it's kind of weighted hook, 18 inches to two foot or more jig head, rule of thumb, experiment with it. I mean, for years, all I threw was the jig head and had plenty of success doing it. Then I got hooked onto those stupid things and now I've got 50 packs of them at my house. <laughs> so white with natural, you know, and same thing as you do with the weighted hook. This time you hook it on straight, but you wanna make sure when you put this bait on there, it is as straight as you can. And the same way you do it, stick it in the water, drag it, make sure it doesn't spin, it swims straight. Now if I'm throwing the red jig head, um, which predominantly I throw white or red jig heads, that's all I throw. Um, if I'm throwing the white, I'm normally throwing the sardine or the smelt. And then on the red, I'll throw the root beer or the new penny. Did they lose me? Okay, there it goes. So with red, kind of match the bait to the jig head. 